my fellow beings, my name is Amanda, and today we are going to be talking about migraines. This is an extremely substantial topic and I had to wade through a lot of research papers in order to get all of the details, but I'm gonna try and make it as simplistic as possible because no one wants to listen to a scientific paper on migraines unless you're a doctor. I don't know. I've had migraines since I was in high school and no one explained migraines to me other than my dad who has migraines. And so he was the one who explained migraines to the best of his ability, but all of the technical stuff that went into what migraines are was not explained to me. And it's probably because it was never explained to my dad. So I am going to help you understand migraines just a little bit better today. I didn't start learning about migraines until I started seeing a neurologist in 2015. So, you know, that's a little bit ago, but it definitely was long past high school. So there was a huge chunk of time that I did not know anything about my migraines. I just knew that it was awful and it sucked. And I didn't want anyone else to go through that kind of pain. So. Let's discuss migraines, shall we? There is so much that I didn't know, and there's so much that is misunderstood about migraines. So we're gonna talk about migraines today so that those misunderstandings can go away. Shoo, be gone. First of all, migraines are not headaches. Is there pain in the head? Yes. But is it a headache? No. That is one of my biggest pet peeves is when people say that they're having a migraine, I panic for them saying, do you need to go to a dark room? Do you need special medications? Do you need to go home? And they're like, oh no, it's fine. I don't take medications for it. And then I'm like, so is it a migraine? And they're like, well, it's a headache. No, they're not the same thing. So let's discuss what a migraine actually is. A migraine is a neurological condition that has so many symptoms that every migraine sufferer that I know has something different. I've talked to a lot of migraine sufferers and everyone seems to have something different that happens during a migraine that I'm like, I've never heard of that before. How interesting unusual or it's a oh, I get that too oh my gosh I get that too or I get that too. I had no idea that that was part of my migraine oh okay I guess now I know that's usually how the conversation goes so what causes migraines that is the question and I'm going to tell you scientists do not know that seems to be a running theme through my videos is that here is a condition. What causes it? I don't know. They believe that genetics plays a role. They also believe that environmental factors play a role. They also believe that there are changes in the brainstem and the trigeminal nerve, which is a huge pain pathway that that could cause migraines. It could also be chemical imbalances such as in serotonin and in calcitonin gene-related peptide or CGRP. That is a really hard one for me to remember. So we don't really know what causes migraines even though they have been described in historical documents for more than a thousand years or more and yet we don't know what causes them. Fantastic. We do know that it is a neurological condition and we do know that it does some weird things to the brain and you get some really weird symptoms with migraines because of the weird trippy things that are happening to your brain. My neurologist describes migraines as a seizure, but in slow motion. And I think that is a perfect description of what a migraine is. So let's talk about what goes into a migraine. It's not just the pain, even though that is a really big part of migraines. 
It's not the only part of migraines because migraines are complicated. Who knew? I knew. Never mind. So there are three parts of a migraine. The first part is the prodrome phase, then you have the attack phase, and then you have the postdrome phase. The prodrome phase is what happens before the attack happens. So this is before the pain actually starts. And this can have some weird symptoms. You can have things like fatigue, food cravings, irritability, and the list goes on and on and on. Like I said, every person is different. Then there's something called an aura, and some people have auras with their migraines. Now this isn't like you look at a person and they're glowing and oh, look at your aura. No, it has to do with the migraine itself. It's a neurological symptom that's happening to a person while they're in the middle of a migraine. Now the aura happens after the prodrome phase, but before the attack phase, but it can overlap into the attack phase. So you can have it while the pain is happening. Now auras, they wreak havoc on your senses. So you're gonna have problems with your vision. You're gonna have problems with touch. You're gonna have problems with hearing. You're gonna have problems with movement, with speech. Symptoms of this kind of aura can be things like seeing shapes, bright lights, colors, kind of trippy like a kaleidoscope. You can have difficulty speaking clearly. You can have tingling or numb sensation in your hands, your arms, or your feet, your legs. You can also have temporary loss of vision as well. Now for me, I get numbness in the left side of my face. It starts with my chin and slowly moves its way up. I also get flashing lights sometimes off into the corners of my eyes. It doesn't happen a lot, but sometimes that can happen. I also smell a burning smell which is also something else that's weird that happens to me. And then I also lose sight in my left eye. Sounds like fun, doesn't it? It's not, but you know, migraines aren't fun. The next phase is the attack phase, and this is where the pain comes in. Symptoms vary from person to person, and every person is unique, but some of the symptoms may include dizziness, increased sensitivity to light and sound, nausea, pain on one side of your head, so it could be your left side, it could be your right side, it could be the front of your head, or it could be the back of your head, just one side of your head hurts. Pulsing or throbbing pain, and then the lovely vomiting. That always just makes the pain in your head feel so much better. If you can't tell, I'm being sarcastic. When I'm in the middle of a migraine, I cannot deal with light. I cannot deal with really loud sounds. I get extremely nauseous and I usually end up vomiting at some point. It's not fun at all, at all. Pain is almost always on the left side of my head and it's usually behind my left eye and it usually feels like my head is going to explode and at some points it has also felt like my head has caught on fire and I have touched my head multiple times to make sure that I wasn't on fire because it burned so bad. The way I like to describe my migraines is like an ice pick is being shoved into my head. It's usually from the back of my head and then they're just twisting it. And I've had some people who think they're being smart say things like, how do you know what an ice pick feels like? An educated guess. I'm making, I'm making an educated guess. No, I've never had an ice pick in my head, but the pain is bad enough that I'm pretty sure I know what it feels like. Hmm. Yeah. The room likes to spin a lot while I'm having migraines and I usually have to grab onto my bed because I feel like I'm gonna fall out of my bed even though nothing's moving, but it feels spinning. Sometimes it spins in this direction and sometimes it spins in this direction. When it's spinning in this direction, that's the scariest one because I really do feel like I'm gonna fall out of the bed. And I usually have to grab onto the side of my bed. And this is pain that I do not wish on another human soul. It is not comfortable and it is really horrendous. The last phase is the postrome phase. 
And this is one where it's after the migraine is complete, where the attack phase is over and what you're feeling after. There's a lot of people that have symptoms of like euphoria or feeling great. I, on the other hand, have the complete opposite. I get a hangover for a couple of days after a migraine. So I feel very nauseous for a couple of days afterwards. I have a constant nagging headache for a couple of days afterwards. I can't really move, my body feels super heavy and I kind of have to drag myself around the house if I need to. So my hangover, whenever someone asks me, how are you doing, is your migraine over? Yes, it's over. I'm now in the middle of my hangover. So it's over, but not quite. So I definitely don't like after migraines either. It, I'll take it over the pain, but it's not enjoyable either. And like I said, every person is different. So what I'm experiencing is not gonna be the same as what anybody else is experiencing. A lot of my symptoms are different from my dad's symptoms that he has. And some of the symptoms that I'm talking about with other people are different. And sometimes we overlap symptoms. So everybody is different. Migraines can last from four to 72 hours. Yay. Have I had them last for a few days? Yes. Is it horrendous? Yes, very much so. Usually though, if you're given the right medications, you can either prevent medications from happening or you can shorten the length of your migraine. So I'm going to show you what I take for my migraines and I take a lot of stuff. So um, one of my first ones is Zolmatriptan. This is, um, one that I have to be careful with now because it doesn't like some of the other medications that I take. So this is one that I have to be like, did I take that other medication? Okay, I can take this. So this is one. I used to take uh, Sumatriptan tablets. Those stopped working for the most part, so they put me on Zolmatriptan. Then they put me on Brelvi, which is brand spanking new. It is like just out on the market and like the little box looks like something that would be in a and they come in these little tabs that make it impossible to like open you have to fold it and then okay migraine pill makers can you make a package that i don't have to actually think about opening when i'm in the middle of absolute horrendous pain because especially like my old sumatriptan things, like I could rarely get into those stupid things when I was in the middle of a migraine because I couldn't think clearly enough to open the stupid things. I remember stabbing one of them with a, a pair of scissors once because I was so fed up. So these, usually if I'm like, I'm having a migraine or I'm getting ready to have a migraine, my husband will open packages for me because for some reason, I think they have a sick sense of humor on uh, packaging. Another thing that I have is, I do have the Sumatriptan shots. Um, this is what my dad used to take when I was growing up. Uh, back then it was called Imitrex. That was the, the brand name. Now it's just generic, but it looked exactly like this and I just recently got these because um right before I went to the ER I ended up um not being able to keep any of my migraine pills down because I kept throwing up and so my doctors are trying to give me as many uh shots as possible so that I don't have to swallow anything so this used to always be in my dad's desk drawer at work and I always thought that it was a board marker. It looks like a board marker. I thought it was weird that it was always in his desk and it wasn't until I was a little bit older that he was like, no, it's a shot. And I stick it in my thigh. So he says this never really worked for him. We'll see, I have not yet had to use this, but considering that Sumatreptin doesn't really work for me anymore anyway. 
we'll see, but this is just in case. Um, working down the line, I also have, here's a lovely needle. And this is Toradol. Um, this is, we're getting into the nothing, nothing is working. Absolutely nothing is working. Um, and this is just a, a milliliter of fluid that my husband will stick in my hip. And this, not one of my favorite things. I don't look forward to these. I try to avoid them. But when desperation calls, that's what happens. The last thing um, that I take, I take a preventative care. And I used to take Amovig, which was a monthly shot that I, I say I give, that my husband would give me. Um, they recently changed me over to a Jovi because uh, we're not sure if the Amovig stopped working. And that's why I had the horrendous migraine that led to everything cascade effect horribleness. Um, so they just switched me over. I started the beginning of this month with this. This has to stay in the fridge, so I need to record this quickly and put this back in the fridge. So, um, but yeah, so this is a monthly shot and it is uh, not comfortable. We'll just say that none of these shots are comfortable. I don't know why I said that shots are just not comfortable. My husband is getting really good at giving me shots because I am too terrified to give shots to myself. One thing that I do take is um, Zofran or Ondansetron, which is for nausea. I call them sprinkles because they literally are the size of sprinkles. Itty bitty pill. So sometimes I just say, get me a sprinkle and well, you know what that means. And that's to help me not puke my brains out. which is helpful. So that's what I take for migraine. Um, lots of, lots of stuff, but my migraines have been slowly getting worse over time. So we have a lot of stuff to help me with my migraines. Theconversation.com says, around one in seven people in the world have migraines, two thirds of whom are women and is recognized by the WHO as the sixth highest cause worldwide of years loss due to disability. But despite this, it, along with other headache disorders, is nevertheless chronically underfunded. Its sufferers often ignored, dismissed, or blamed, and their ailments underdiagnosed and undertreated. So migraines are not taken seriously, and historically that has been the case from around the 18th century onward. It used to be taken much more seriously, but then around the 18th century is when it started not being taken seriously. And then only recently was it deemed a real ailment. <sighs> yeah. I believe that one of the major factors behind it not being so taken seriously nowadays is that migraines is used interchangeably with headaches. As someone who suffers a lot from frequent daily headaches and a lot of migraines, I can tell you that there is a huge difference between the two. They are not the same thing. So when you're having a really bad headache and headaches can get really bad, but just because it's a bad headache doesn't mean it's a migraine. A migraine is a neurological condition. And if you get an MRI right after you have a migraine, you can actually see that you had a migraine. I once had an MRI after I had a migraine and they're like, oh, I see you just had a migraine. I, I didn't need to go through an MRI for you to tell me about the migraine I just had. Thank you. So feelings wise, definitely not the same thing, but medically wise, they are not the same thing. And yet they're used interchangeably. So let's stop doing that. Another thing that I noticed recently was there was a commercial for a over-the-counter migraine medication that said that they had a migraine simulator. 
and basically they asked migraine sufferers like what happens to you when you're having a migraine and they had their loved ones put on like a VR thing and they walked around and could see what was going on and I was actually offended by this commercial. There was a few commercials doing the same thing and it was insulting because all they did was take the auras that people had put them on a VR system and had their loved ones walk around with them. And when they first said we have a migraine simulator, I thought, are they going to shove an ice pick in someone's head? Like, how are you going to simulate this? And when it was just the auras and they're walking around, they're like, oh my gosh, this is so horrible. And they're crying. I didn't know this is what you were going through. While the auras are not comfortable and I don't like them, and I don't want to go through them, they're definitely not the worst part of a migraine. And I could probably get through a day being blind in my left eye. I could probably get through a day having numbness on the sides of my face or having weird lights. I could probably get through the day doing that. It's the pain that is the bad part. And it's insulting that they only had the auras. And I know that's all you really can simulate because seriously, what are you going to do? Electrocute someone's head? But I think that also adds to the misinformation that's out there because people view this commercial and say, oh, well, you're having a migraine? Psh, I could deal with some colorful life, it's fine. When in fact, that's not what you're going through with the the blindness in the eye there's pressure and i i want to rip my eyeball out of my socket because i think that will help you know not the same thing migraines are complicated they are debilitating and they are scary you can feel really isolated when you have migraines and a lot of times you can feel like you're missing out on living all together but one thing i want you to know if you suffer from migraines, you are not alone. There are millions of us and I see you. I see you fighting, I see you suffering, and I see you continuously picking yourself back up and I see you continuing on. You are amazing. Keep going. Someday we're gonna have the answers and we're gonna have a cure. But for now, keep being you. And if you know someone that has migraines, have compassion and have some understanding. They are debilitating and they are not a joke. The person you know has probably dealt with more pain than you will ever know in your entire lifetime. So please have compassion for them and love them for who they are. I hope you learned something from that, or at least took a little something from that. If you're interested about learning about the various chronic illnesses that are out there, or you wanna know what life is like living with a lot of different chronic illnesses, then go ahead and click that subscribe button. And make sure that you hit the like button because that tells the YouTube algorithm that this video needs to be put up in front of more people. If you wanna get notifications that I have put out a new video, then go ahead and click the bell icon and I post every Monday at noon. Remember to be kind, kindness is free, so give it out to everyone and I'll see you next time. Bye. You can help me record today. Oh, sorry. Yeah. Here we go. Oh, no more kitty. A migraine is a neurological can get. <laughs> they believe that genetics player. <sighs> Why are words so difficult? <sighs> Even though they have been described in historical doc.
Hello, tiny children. I fell off of one of those ones. It's one of those magic carpet thingies. So let's talk about what goes on with it. Today is a struggle. Today is a struggle. So what? We're gonna have to stop now because the AC just turned on and my husband apparently just came home. So we have AC, we have garage door opener. Yay, noises that cause crazy amounts of noise. And of course my cat has to start scratching on a scratching post right now. Oi. <sighs> if you're interested in learning about, if you're interested about learning about the various common denominators, I've been sending too many math memes to my husband, who's a math teacher. Yep. <laughs>